Welcome, y'all. So today, this is a uh, principle that could really enhance one's uh, power in a certain direction. So when we talk about channeling energy, we're really tapping into the uh, bodily function. And not only the bodily function, but the energetic function that comes from the combustion of foods, it comes from nutrients, it comes from that life prana force that goes into the blood and eventually becomes the human sap, which in Ayurveda we call this ojas. Ojas is that vital essence of the body. It gives a person uh, density, it gives them depth, it gives them a richness, it gives them a ability to fight off uh, many things, disease, even physical adversaries. So ojas is important to cultivate in order to function optimally. And uh, this is one of the benefits of controlling one's sexual impulse. The uh, ancient practices uh, throughout time, spiritual practices, meditative pa practices, uh, practices of abstinence, uh, all of these contribute to the optimal or at least the harvesting of sexual energy. And so one needs to take into account when they are working to channel the energy, the benefits will outweigh the struggle sometimes. And if everybody, if it was an easy thing to do, everybody would do it. Uh, however, the challenge is, is because we are by nature sexual creatures, there is a impulse, there is a strong drive. So it is a strong energy. And one must understand that they are dealing with a strong energy. The energy is so powerful that it can move a person into action and it can also sustain a person in a adversarial action. If one is engaged in struggle, the sexual energy can help blast a person through that struggle. It's that powerful. Uh, but the problem is, is because, because it is dissipated with most people uh, too often, then it can halt a person because of bad habits. So one of the principles in Think and Go Rich is the transmutation of sexual energy. And this, again, it's been known all throughout time that this was the case, especially by the secret societies who really made a study of it. But the ability to channel the sexual energy without dissipating the sexual energy is really an art form. And the uh, practice itself can be undertaken and mastered. Uh, it is a practice that one can learn to do in such a way that it really is channeled in a very effective way to lead to optimal performance, optimal results, and uh, also keeping one healthy or even recovering one's health as well. So th the practice of the conserving, of the conserving of ojas is something that can really transform, as with all of these principles, one's life. And this happens really through self-discipline. Self-discipline itself is the practice of the rediversion of attention. 
And if one gets sidetracked down thoughts that move a person into the sexual impulse, the sexual expression, then uh, that can uh, steer a person off of their major goal. And so really the act of transmutation itself is the act of changing one's thoughts. It's the act of rediversion of attention. If the tension is not rediverted, then one can, one may fall into more of a temptation into the sexual uh, expression. So it's not that sexual expression is bad on it by itself, right? There's, there's not a, it's not an evil thing necessarily. Uh, but the uh, problem comes where it's uncontrolled. And this is really the key, the key question is, is this, does one have authority and sovereignty over their sexual impulse? And if this is not the case, if they are being led by the lower self, then it's a problem. Then one is not, does not have proper self-discipline over themselves. And uh, this is really a major function, a major uh, thing, because if a person of success, whether man or woman, if they can't control themselves, if they can't control their carnal mind, then it's much easier to be tempted off of the path. It's much easier to lose ground that one has made through uh, indulgence and also just the time itself that's taken up by the pursuit of the, ex the sexual expression. Whereas if one takes that energy and channels it into their job, into their training, into their expression, their creative expression, then there's energy behind it. And not only energy behind it, but sustained energy behind it. And so the ability to transmute sexual energy is a great power. And that's why it is a power of self-discipline. It is a principle of self-discipline because it's such a not only enhancement, but it can also be a detriment. If one, if one cannot have self-discipline over their sexual impulse, then they don't truly have self-discipline. A person can be led astray to the point where they're pursuing sexual nature things that don't lead anywhere versus actually putting their attention, putting their energy on positive growth. And I've related this to also the power and the lack of power that if one gets uh, sucked into uh, things like pornography, then one can dissipate themselves and, and most likely will dissipate themselves at the very least with their time in that. And so any kind of diversion from the critical path of one's journey towards one's goals that is rediverted in a way that's not approved of by the higher mind, then that is a diversion from uh, one's efficiency. It's a diversion from one's energetic movement towards that goal. It's an energetic, it's a dissipation of true uh, expression, ultimately, of energy towards one's goal. And so this is not an easy pursuit or else everyone would do it. However, of the 2% who can do it, it is a great power. It is an ability to 
command oneself in such a way that they can be their best. They can be their uh, ultimate self through the channeling of the sexual energy. So y'all, I mean, this is, this is a critical piece. As with all of these principles of self-discipline, this is a critical piece because the epidemic of pornography these days the epidemic of apps these days, the epidemic of videos these days, just of the opposite sex on social media. These are all, and can be diversions, right? These can all be little side streets that one takes and it gets one off of their critical path. And so it's very important to fathom the seriousness of it, even though it itself is not necessarily serious, the thing itself takes up, number one, vital resource, nutrients, uh, the energy expenditure, the time, uh, but it also, it drains one's, it can drain one's spirit ultimately too. If one is dissipating themselves in ways that are unhealthy, that can drain a person's spirit. It can also affect one's confidence and one's faith in the process. So really fathom what you're up against when it comes to taking into consideration things like the sexual impulse. Uh, this could also be addictions, but the sexual impulse is so powerful that if not channeled properly, it can lead a person into spending their time, their energy, everything else into paths that either lead to destruction or at the very least, they take up a lot of one's time. Okay, and um, y'all, the, the process, I'm gonna go over a few ways to channel here at the end give you a little treat, but the main way to channel is to, as I've already said, is to divert the attention through thought. If you can think and change the thought, that can help uh, channel uh, that energy somewhere else. Okay, and the other thing is stretching and exercise. And this sounds simple, but many people get these principles in their head and they don't act them out. But stretching and exercise are another way to channel the sexual energy. And the other thing is reading and meditation. So through meditation, one can do, uh, there's two primary ways. You can do with a mantra or a breathing exercise. And uh, there is one final one where if you're doing pure Zazen meditation, you can do just a non doing just focusing on the breath, or not even focusing on anything just breathing. But you ultimately you're dealing with the channeling of the breath, when you do meditation, and this is a calming and it's a balancing of the ojas in the body. So what can happen is the ojas will store in a particular region of the body. And in the case of sexual impulse, it's going down to the second chakra and it's residing in the second chakra. And so the object of meditation is to move the ojas into all regions of the body so it can work in harmony together. And this is a major issue when it comes to those who are chronic, um, they, they chronically get sucked into the sexual impulse is the second chakra becomes too flooded with the ojas. And so the ojas must be circulated throughout the body and even into the upper regions. Some yogis, some practitioners will move the ojas upward into the upper chakras and then be able to access PowerPoints in the system 
and take their consciousness to higher levels of being and its expression itself. And so this practice of transmutation often is the practice of raising the ojas out of the lower, the lower chakras, but also the circulation of ojas all throughout the body. And this could be uh, in many different areas. Uh, as a Kung Fu teacher, um, I teach a lot about this. This is a very, this can be very effective in many areas, not just health. So this is the meditative practice of transmutation. The physical practice is really the expression of energy. So when you circulate the energy through exercise, you're letting the energy come through, you're circulating it, you're opening up the channels for it to move through the system. And therefore, it's good for the heart, it's good for the lungs, it's good for your entire body. Ojas itself will rebuild the system. Its nature is rebuilding. Uh, but it also makes a person stronger. So uh, exercise is a great way to channel uh, one's sexual energy. And they can do that also through weightlifting. Weightlifting is great. Um, weightlifting, cardio, calisthenics... All of these are good for channeling the ojas, but also uh, you could do holds, static holds, such as yoga poses, kung fu, many different things. Um, so, so yeah, this is this is a very uh, critical piece to get of the puzzle because you can conquer certain areas of the self-discipline tool belt, right? You may have a few of these tools, but then you need a, you need this additional tool to really complete it. This could be the one that really solidifies a person. And sometimes th there will be certain ones that are more difficult for certain people, right? This one may be easy for you. Uh, and then maybe a focus is hard or maybe focus is easy, but then uh, you have another one like motivation and you can't get motivated. You can focus, but you can't motivate. So it depends on a, a person. But the, the purpose here is to uh, gain these qualities, to understand these principles to where they become qualities of oneself. And that leads to true mastery and if one can master a subject matter such as self-discipline, that can lead a person to great heights because being able to control yourself, being able to channel your energy and down a particular route, as far as I'm concerned, this is more, this is more beneficial than a college degree because you can learn uh, many subjects, but to implement them, to become them, to become something that affects your day-to-day -day process, that affects your beingness, that affects your doingness, that can give the person a power to go down any route and to master that route. And so, as far as I'm concerned, the stuff you're learning on here now that we're going over is... Uh, it's just, I'd say it's just as uh, beneficial, if not more beneficial, than a college degree. Now, I realize some college degrees are very area specific and you need that specific information. I get it. Or that specific protocol or, or whatever. But I'm talking about day-to-day -day processes functioning. There are many people who are very brilliant, but they lack discipline. They lack that ability to follow through. They lack faith in themselves. They lack the ability to control the sexual impulse, for instance, and it can ruin their life. It really is something that goes beyond just the study. It goes beyond the intellect. It affects one's beingness. One literally bees different in the world 
when they integrate the principles of self-discipline. Okay, y'all. So as always, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, so many good things going on right now uh, here. And look, y'all, if you are motivated and you want to get going and you want to work on channeling, I invite you to take the free med meditation course that I have on here. Uh, you can sign up right through the website and completely secure. Um, and then the other thing is that if you want to get going with exercise, I have the uh, cardio kickboxing. Now the cardio kickboxing, I have put a workout course on there too, a calisthenic workout course. This is the 30 minute workout. Well, it's actually a 20 minute workout, but you can easily double the workout together and make it a 30 minute. And then there's three different workouts. So you have uh, up to 90 minutes of workout on this program. So this is adjacent to the cardio kickboxing. But uh, y'all, I mean, do this. Conquer this aspect of yourself. And when you can, when you can get a hold of it and you can channel it, you will have much more effectiveness and with all these other benefits that have been listed on this video. So take it seriously. All of these principles I suggest one to take seriously and to integrate and to reinforce. That's really important to continually reinforce until you really get it and then keep doing it, you know, just to remind yourself too. Okay, y'all, uh, again, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being on here. Thank you for your attention. And, uh, and then also, I know y'all also know we have the membership available for um, those who want to, who want a little extra. So there's actually entire courses. Actually, the Ayurveda course is on the membership, y'all. I, I don't know if I told y'all this, but the Ayurveda psychology course is on the membership. So if you wanna get going with some really interesting stuff, I would definitely sign up for at least a month, maybe ongoing, because I'm continually posting stuff on there as well. But, um, but yeah, all right, y'all. See you next time.